Welcome to UAPB Currents. I'm your host, Shelley Roby Ingram, and today we're joined by Dr. Charles R. Colin Jr., who is the Chair for Industrial Technology Management and Impl Applied Engineering, and also Chair for Mathematics and Computer Science and the Co-PI of STEM. Did I get everything? STEM and Academy. The STEM Academy and yeah. the Chair of the Homecoming Committee and... <laughs> 500 other things we're going to pick. We'll yeah, just we'll leave, leave those off we'll leave for those right off now. Today. That'll be another show. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, um, for all of those things you do, I know you're going to come back another day and we'll talk about uh, industrial technology management and uh, applied engineering and those departments and areas. But today you're here to talk about the STEM Academy. So what exactly um, do you do with the STEM Academy? What are your, is your role? My role as the uh, co-PI of the STEM Academy is I'm basically, I'm basically over the day-to-day -day operations. And within our STEM Academy, we have a three or four different facets that go on. And then we also have project managers that work with different programs. But the three programs we have in the STEM Academy include the HBCU UP program. We also have an ARC LS AMP program. And we also have what we call our STEM graduate program. Now the uh, HBCU UP and the LSM program are also are funded by NSF, which is the Na National Science Foundation. Okay. And then the uh, graduate program is sponsored by the Department of Education. And what well, we have are project managers for the LSM program, which is uh, Dr. Nissa Buckner, and then we have a project manager for the uh, STEM grant uh, graduate program, which is uh, Dr. Jesse Walker. And I work with the uh, HBCU UP program and over all those uh, our principal investigators Dr. Mary Benjamin. Okay all right now um, before we get into all of that and all the programs that you all do what exactly for those who don't know what exactly is STEM and what is the STEM Academy here at the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff? Okay what STEM actually is it's an acronym that stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Mathematics. And as you look in the newspapers or you look on the news, you see there is a need or a shortage of people majoring in those STEM areas. Science, technology, engineering, engineering and math is really what drives the United States on, you know, when you're looking at protecting the United States from foreign agents or protecting the United States here. Uh, you need technology to help with diseases. You need science to help with solving a lot of problems that you have here. And so what the National Science Foundation's goal is to increase the number of minorities in those areas. So what our program does here is we bring in students that choose to major in uh, biology, chemistry, physics, math, computer science, industrial technology, management, and applied engineering. Also we use uh, animal science, plant science, pre-engineering majors. All those majors are part of our program. And what we do is we have a different set of programs that's designed to get, help those students matriculate through and graduate with some, in one of those degree areas. Okay. Now, I know one of the things that's important to um, the STEM Academy and your students and one of the things that you press is uh, internships and, and co-ops and involvements to get the students' experience. So uh, tell us a little bit about that as it pertains to the STEM Academy. What we do is uh, that first, we have what we call our pre-first year academy, and that's when the students first graduate from high school. They come to campus. Uh, we provide them with a uh, $1,800 stipend during the summer. We cover their room and board. And what we do is we work on their math skills, writing skills. They do biology. They do chemistry. They do computer, uh, computer science. They also deal a lot with professional development. We bring in uh, different professionals in the sciences, in the STEM areas, and they come and speak to them. And we also try to develop them and get them a head start on, on going to college. So that's what we do that first summer. Then during the semester, during the fall and spring semesters, we give them an $800 stipend. They work on campus. They have research projects that they work around on campus which is kind of helping them get ready for those interns. And then we meet every Thursday at 11 o'clock. And that's when our, we come together and we have over 150 students uh, in the STEM scholars program now. And we meet with those students and we talk to them. And what we do is we, get, we have speakers come in. Those speakers come in, they talk about their research projects, what's going on, but they also bring 
internship opportunities with them. Okay. And then we also receive a lot of internship opportunities through email and also from our contacts. And so on that second summer, uh, that second summer after their freshman year, we expect them to go out and start doing internships. And so that process begins during the fall semester and it continues through the spring. We try to get as many people out doing internships those summers. And then sometimes we have students that actually do what we call a co-op and they actually go and work during the semester. They right. may go work with the industry during a semester and they get a, a maybe six months of experience. So we push those, we, in, uh, we make them make sure they go out and uh, apply. Uh, we work on their application, we work on their statement of goals, we work on their, uh, you know, writing reference letters or talk, getting people to write reference letters for them, making the request. So all that's part of our STEM Academy. That's what we do during the semesters. Okay. All right. Now, with all of those things that the students are doing, um, I guess what I want to ask is how, how does someone become a STEM student? All right. First of all, you need to major in a STEM area. Okay. That's, a, that's one of the first criteria. Uh, the second one, if you're still in high school, you're a graduating senior, you're welcome to come out to uh, the Walker Research Center. We have applications available. The requirements are a 19 on the ACT and also a 2.9 grade point average. Uh, and what we try to do is we try to bring those students in. Those are the ones that would apply for our STEM uh, summer academy, the pre-first year academy. Right. Then once they get to campus, then what we do is as, as students in some of our programs, as students graduate, then we, it opens up more slots. But we usually have about 25 slots, 25 to 30 slots in the summer. Okay, and so the, it's a... Uh there are a certain number of people that right, you can during, accept in the program. During the summer. Okay. Yeah, during the summer, we have, when we wrote the grants, it's slotted for like 25 students, so it's competitive. We interview the students, okay. we bring them in, we interview them, uh, we choose from that group, and then that's who gets to come in the summer. And then a lot of times we'll be able to add some, some students on as students graduate and matriculate out. So if you have a, you know, a STEM major, that's one of the things that re that's required. And then you can get in touch with our office and you can reach, uh, you can call Ms. Chandra Taylor. Her number is 870-575-7112. Uh, or you can go to uh, our website and go to uapb.edu and, and click on the STEM Academy. And you can find the information there also. Okay. All right. Um, it's almost time for us to go to break. So we're going to go ahead and go to break. And then when we come back, then we'll talk about a little more about the STEM students and the length of the program and, and um, how it carries them through their college career. Okay. Great. All right. All right. We'll be right back on UAPB Currents with more about the STEM Academy. There are a million places you'd never consider texting. So why would you do it while driving? Leave risky driving to the professionals. Stop the texts, and together we can stop the wrecks. I'm big. I'm big. I'm big. I've done big things. Some even say I'm bigger than life. But you know what? There's nothing bigger than life. Not when someone you love is fighting to live. You want to do something big? You want to do something big? Sign up to donate marrow and save a life. Take the first step at bethematch.org. See how big you can be. You could be the one to save a life. They say that when you're facing extreme danger, your life flashes before you. <laughs> if you think that's sad, consider facing it before you even have enough life to flash before your eyes. Car crashes are a leading killer of children 1 to 13. Deaths and injuries can be prevented by using the right car seat. Visit safercar.gov slash the right seat to know what is appropriate for each age and size. 
Welcome back to UAPB Currents, where again, we're joined by Dr. Charles R. Colin Jr. And I'm going to leave out the rest of your title. That will be fine. They can just read it and we'll just go from there because it's too many titles. <laughs> um, and I was supposed to give the disclaimer that this is my neighbor and, and my best friend's husband. That's, those are your other titles. Right. Who, um, but all of that, and I know so much about the STEM program because you guys are great advocates of the STEM program. Every time we see anybody, I, I'm serious, in the grocery store. <laughs> What are you majoring in? You need to join STEM program. <laughs> so I know that it's something that you guys, your whole family, is yeah. very passionate about. Your um, eight-year-old told me this morning what STEM stood for when I told her that you were coming on the show. That's so, good. I'm glad she knows that. And you need to give her some money for that. She's she knows working everything. for you. Yeah, she does. She's working for you. But um, we talked a little bit before we went to break about the fact that STEM students enter into the program the summer before their freshman year and they continue on and you can take it over from there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well what they do is, like I said, we meet every Thursday and some of the activities that we have, we have, they have a community service project that they work on. They also work with uh, tutoring. They, they have peer tutoring where they help each other, but they've also helped uh, some of the students at the community center. Uh, that's a lot of things that the students do uh, they work they help each other with working with interviewing because a lot of times when you go out to get internships or whatever you have to know how to interview to get that position so they work with them with that and then they help like i said with their school work so those are the main some of the main activities that they do and that matriculates through the entire time so we we this program is not a bridge program where we just want them to go from high school to college but this right. program is definitely about graduation it's about graduation and that's what uh, the nsf wants us to do is graduate more of these students in the STEM areas. Okay, all right, and uh, do you want to talk a little bit about some of your retention numbers and, and those things? Yeah, this retention numbers we're really proud of. Uh, <laughs> we started out when we first got the grant, we were around, uh, I guess around 65%. Uh, well, we've gotten that number up to 87%. Good. Our last group, uh, and that's mainly looking at our retention rates from you know freshman to sophomore and how many we maintain. And that number is, like I said, the last number we got for this particular year is around 87%. And we're real, real, real proud of that because it's showing that some of these are some of the things that you can do to maintain our students. The uh, average ACT score on this last group was around 21. Okay. In the past, it's been around 17, 18. So we're working with getting that number up. Uh, also, what we did, we've done a few presentations for our former president, Sugg, and he, he, wanted to, he was really impressed by the program and our retention rate. And he wanted to really try to see if we could spread it across the whole campus, entire campus. So that's one of the things, I guess, future that we're looking forward to is seeing if we can get more students. Because I think retention is a real, real important issue that we have here on the campus. Right. Okay. Now uh, we'll take the opportunity to talk a little bit about some of the programs that fall under the STEM Academy. Some of the things that you guys and students participate, the different programs that students have opportunity to participate in. Okay. Well, I can start off with uh, all these programs I'm going to talk to you about now. It's over $11 million. That's, a many, that's how much money we, we generated from grants for these programs. Now, the first one I called out was the HBCU Up program. Okay. And it's basically, we've had this program since uh, 2004. And we, now, we, tell us what HBCU Up is stands HBC, for. I'm sorry. <laughs> HBCU Up stands for Historically Black Colleges and Universities Undergraduate Program. Okay. So. What that, what that, that's the first one we got. That was the first grant that we got back in 2004. You get these grants for probably around five years. And what you do is we did a good job and we rewrote and got another uh, grant for the same amount again. Now, the, the HBCU Up was our first grant, and that's really what started the STEM Academy. Mm -hmm. After that, we went on and got what we call the ARC LSAMP. And the ARC LSAMP program, the acronym for that is Arkansas. Louis, Arkansas Lewis Stokes Alliance for Minority Participation. Okay. And it's named after Lewis Stokes, who was one of the congressmen. And what we did with that one was the HBCU was strictly for UAPB students. Mm -hmm. The ARC LSAMP one, we're the lead institution and we work with uh, University of Arkansas at Fayetteville, University of Arkansas at Little Rock, University of Arkansas at Monticello, Arkansas State, Philander Smith College, uh, Pulaski Tech, and Sea Art College. 
those are the uh, other seven colleges that make up this alliance, and there's eight colleges that make up this alliance. And all those students come to UAPB in the summer, and they do a first-year institute, a first-year mm -hmm. summer institute, and then they spread back out and they go to their respective colleges during the fall. And then in the spring, all those students come together and they have a spring research conference every year. Okay. And so that was the other grant that we did. And then after that one, along parallel, kind of parallel with that one, we got the graduate graduate uh, education grant. And what that was that one was about was if we're going to produce all these STEM majors and STEM graduates, we said we, education, the Department of Education said we need STEM teachers. Mm -hmm. So what we do now is we work with the STEM, uh, with the STEM teachers for the in education with their master's program, and so this grant helps them with the uh, getting degrees in uh, the in STEM areas for high school. And so we we're working on that now. I can't tell you the exact number that we have out. Well, we have, I think, about four or five that are going to be graduating this semester. We had our math graduate, our first math graduate, I think, last last uh, graduation. Mm -hmm. So we're actually putting STEM teachers out along with all these STEM uh, undergraduate students also. So, we, and so those are the three programs that we have that fit under the STEM Academy right now. And we also get funding from the Arkansas Science Authority, Science, Arkansas Science Authority. It's called ASTA, mm -hmm. and uh, it's, I'm sorry, it's Arkansas Science Te and Technology Authority. Okay. And it's called ASTA, it's with the state of Arkansas. And so they help with the uh, LSM grant also. Okay. So what it did, it's brought about a large synergy on campus with STEM. So I think everyone knows kind of what STEM, what the, they've heard of the STEM Academy. Right. They might not know everything that goes on with it, but that's kind of why I'm here today. To that's get right. get that word out. That is true. Absolutely. We're here to find out more about the STEM Academy and the STEM students. And um, we're going to get ready to go to break. And when we come back from break, we're going to talk um, a little more about some of the um, activities that the STEM students have an opportunity to participate in and some of the other things that the STEM Academy sponsors like the science fairs and things of that nature and uh, about the new facility that we're building here yeah. on campus that it's we're excited about. about yeah, yeah, we can talk about that. So uh, we'll be right back after this break on UAPB Current. Hi, my name is Danny Andre Brill II, a senior here majoring in Industrial Technology, Management, and Applied Engineering. I thought that I would be looking for a job at this point, but thanks to my mentor, Dr. Charles Colin at Career Services, I was able to obtain a position as an Industrial Engineer upon graduation. Danny worked hard in class from the beginning, obtaining three internships while on campus. UAPB can help prepare students like Danny for those same opportunities. UAPB prepared me. Welcome back to UAPB Currents, and again, we're joined by Dr. Charles R. Colin Jr., uh, and we're here talking about the STEM Academy, and you all have to excuse me because Dr. Colin and, and our director, Randy, are just really going into conversation about the STEM Academy and all the things that they do during the break. And, uh, you know, we do have quite a few events that the STEM Academy puts on through the year that we have opportunity to attend and visit and, and participate in uh, with the videotaping of those events and things or whatever. So we were gonna talk a little about the outreach uh, to some of the lower grades, K-12, that um, the STEM Academy does. Yes, uh, actually we have uh, really two big events that we do every year. Uh, we have a science fair expo exposition that we do, and we used to just do it for the uh, 
high school, but we moved it down to junior high. And so mm -hmm. now, actually, the co-op has a, a, a science fair for K through six mm -hmm. or K through seven, and then we actually pick up and do junior high. So we uh, have that every year. It's around February, usually about the third week in February. And we have it out at the hyper complex and it's, we usually have a large number maybe 150 to 200 students participate just number kind of varies mm -hmm. from year to year then we also have what we call our saturday academy and with that saturday academy that's designed for 10th 11th and 12th graders and what we do is bring them out on saturdays we do four saturdays during the spring semester okay. so it's going on now uh, we bring them out and we expose them to they do a chemistry project a biology project uh, computer science project, mathematics, and then they do uh, projects with uh, industrial technology management and applied engineering. And they also do some uh, GPS and GIS work. Okay. So it, we do about four weekends and within those weekends they cover all those different projects. And we also have some work with the uh, teachers. We actually have workshops for them to help them kind of get more excited about science to help them with different uh, assignments that they have. And these are science teachers that come out and they work. So the students go in one area and work in the labs and the teachers go into another area and have a workshop. And so it's real fun for those students to do that. And we've been doing that for the past probably six or seven years. So that's another activity that we have as far as outreach. Okay. Now, with the science fair expositions, I know that those are things that the students participate in through their schools. But with the Saturday Academy, how do students go about becoming a part of that? And is it, um, you know, a selective process like the STEM Academy? Yeah, it's selected also. The students do go through the school also. We have uh, contact with those, you know, those science teachers that mm -hmm. I told you to come out or math teachers, those are the teachers that the students will get in contact with and that's how they, those are selected also. Because we usually, uh, we've actually partnered with the Little Rock School District, so we'll have uh, 50 students from the Pine Bluff School District and 50 from the Little Rock School District. And so we work with the teachers and the superintendents to get that done. Okay, all right. Now, um, I know that your STEM students here at the university have an opportunity to participate in several activities in addition to the internships that they do through the year. Um, they have opportunity to participate in some conferences yeah. that, um, that they have. Tell us a little bit about those types of conferences. Uh, the conference they attend, uh, it depends a lot of times on what their major is. Mm -hmm. Like we, we, I take mine to one of the conferences called the National Society for Black Engineers Conference. We do that usually in March. Uh, they have computer science conferences that they go to. Uh, the chemistry, the biology students, the physics students, they also have their own specific conferences. Then we have general conferences that they go to okay. where we have one conference that's sponsored by the uh, NSF called the uh, Emerging Technologies uh, Conference, EARN, I think that's the name, I think that's the acronym for it. Okay. And uh, Emerging Research Technologies, I think. But uh, I could be wrong on that, but <laughs> they go and, and present. They actually go, like when students have gone and, and done research in their mm -hmm. summers, then they go and present and they've actually won awards. They okay. actually have like, they do oral presentations. They also do poster presentations. And when they do those presentations, they're in co com competition with students from other universities. And we've had students that have won first place in the uh, oral presentation, won about $300. And uh, I think that's a nice gift to go it on is. a trip and, and for a full paid trip. And then you win $300 also. So we've had students to win those the research awards there. They also have something for the students, like they have poetry and they have uh, some other things, kind of not all science, and we've had some to win, you know, the poetry contest also. Okay. So you can see that our students are well-rounded, and when they leave this campus and go out and represent the university, they're doing an excellent job at it. Okay, all right, and now that'll move us into uh, talking about the STEM Academy and Conference Center that we're building here at the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, where you'll be able to house beautifully all of those trophies and medals and certificates yeah. that the students have gone out and won at these various conferences. So tell us a little bit about that facility. Uh, we're really excited about that. It's going to be about a 20, 29, 28,000, 29,000 a square foot building. Uh, it's going to have uh, research labs in it, uh, classrooms, computer lab. It'll house all of our uh, STEM offices, all our programs. Uh, and it also will have a uh, conference center which would be about a 400 seat conference center okay. and it's going to be loaded, located on LA Prexy Davis Drive actually it's uh, in between the uh, Baptist Student Union and the Hyper Complex mm -hmm. 
And if you're riding on campus, you can ride by and see the picture of it. It's actually <laughs> out, and they're actually doing the uh, dirt work now as we yeah. speak on it. So they've actually started construction on the project, and we're real excited about that. Uh, we're actually moving out of uh, the space that we currently occupy is about 1,200 square feet. Oh, wow. So we're in a little small area. Students will come in to study and work together and tutor, and, and it's like they're sitting on top of each other. They, but it's like a, it's a real homely homely environment there yeah. and I think that's the synergy that's built up from us having the uh, program in such a small area so we hope to maintain that and then the other plan is to actually our second part of the project is to actually build a STEM village and we're working with the alumni to actually uh, work on building some dorms behind that behind the uh, STEM uh, conference center okay and so that would be the other aspect and so our whole concept is to get a STEM village involved okay. so that's what we're pushing. So we're really excited about that. The project's around, uh, I don't want to get a number. I want to say around over, I'll say over $7 million. So. Okay. All right. And it'll be money well spent because we'll, yeah. the university and the community will receive that return with the students who are being prepared to go out and work and teach in these fields. Yeah. Okay. So before we go, tell us how... Do you go about becoming a STEM Academy student here at the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff? For all of you who are just thoroughly interested in, you know, you're interested in science, technology, engineering, or mathematics, and you want, know that this is the place for you. Well, yeah, if you, uh, we know this is the place for you. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> what I would like to tell you is that First thing is you want to contact Ms. Chandra Taylor. Her number is 870-575-7112. Uh, you can also reach her at the email of stem at uapb.edu. That's the uh, email address that you can reach her. And also, uh, we, we welcome visits. You're welcome to come out on campus. And I guess the other information would be if you're a graduating senior and you're interested in the STEM area, this would be a great opportunity for you to start. We usually start our summer program in June, so it'll probably be about the second week of June when we start that program. And anything else, I think Chandra will be able to answer those questions for you. Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming and telling us all about the STEM program and the STEM Academy. And we'll have you back to talk about all those other titles that are beneath your name. No problem. <laughs> okay. And thank you, and we will see you next time on UAPB Current. Thank you.